British AC plugs and sockets are very different from a lot of the other plugs and socket sets around the world, and they're super different than what we're used to here in North America. In fact, holding these two next to each other, these British ones seem absolutely mammoth. But I'm gonna cover 10 reasons why I think this plug and this socket may just be the best design set in the entire world, as well as a handful of reasons why I think they might not be. Feature number 10 on our list is this longer ground pin. Now, long ground pins are actually super common. We see them in our US plugs and in other plugs all over the world, but this is quite different actually. It serves a purpose in an overall safety system on these types of plugs. By the way, these are called Type G, and the Type G here has this longer pin because as you insert it, and by the way, across the pond there, they call this an earth pin. So as you insert the earth pin, you'll notice that the first thing that touches is that earth pin because it's longer. So the neutral and the live haven't made contact yet, but there's actually what's called a shutter system inside here that it's opening up by pushing that one in first. So just now, as I got it that far, it opened up the shutters, and then I can proceed to plug it all the way in. Until I do that, these are actually closed off. Obviously, never stick anything into an outlet. Now, this may be telling about me, I don't know, but literally one of the earliest memories I have in life is when I was super little, maybe three or four, and I stuck something into an outlet, got completely shocked, and I remember looking at the outlet after this had happened and seeing these black scorch marks all over it. But kids in the UK most likely haven't had that experience. In case you weren't aware, you can get the shirt that I'm wearing as well as many other DIY-oriented shirts, and you can check those out in the links in the description below. Feature number nine is that when we insert the earth pin and clear those shutters, the only thing that's exposed on the live and the neutral is actually this black section here. If you're wondering what that is, that's actually a bit of insulation and it's nine millimeters up these pins here. So that's because once you have some contact with the live and the neutral to your receptacle, it makes it so that you can't touch anything that's live at that point. Check it out. So if I get this part of the way in there, and it's actually touching, now the only thing that's exposed is just the insulated area, which is not conductive. So I might be able to touch that and actually be safe, and that's the idea anyway. Obviously, you should never try that, but they make it really difficult to get yourself shocked because everything is covered and protected as part of this overall safety system. Feature number eight has everything to do with how the cord comes out of the plug itself. As I plug this into the wall outlet here, you'll notice that it's always coming down on the bottom like this and that makes it so that you can't really pull this thing out. If you pull this way with it, it's just gonna stay in place. And even if you pull out this way, you can pull this pretty good, and it's really not going anywhere. It's a really smart feature. Now this has come loose a little bit, but a lot less than it would if the cord were coming out of the face of the plug. Speaking of plugs being ripped out of the wall, that brings us to feature number seven. If we open this up and take a look inside here, you'll actually see that there's some pretty cool safety features built right inside. The first thing you might notice is there is built-in strain relief right here, and the cool thing is you can actually remove these little fins in many cases to replace this cord if you need to or to work on it. The next thing is the short cable in here, this brown one, that's your live cable. And this live wire right here is the shortest one and the straightest one, so that as you pull this cord out, if it gets ripped out specifically, that one is gonna be the first one to disconnect cutting the electricity to the rest of this. The second one is this blue or the neutral one here that's underneath, and that will get pulled out next. And at that point, you have no electricity connected, just your ground. I think it's pretty brilliant that there's extra slack built into the ground. There's very little, but a little bit of slack built into the neutral and no slack built into the live, so that if this gets ripped out, it pulls the electricity first, again, keeping the user safe. While we're looking at the open plug, that brings us to feature six, which is the fact that these type G plugs can actually be opened up just about any time you need to by removing one or more screws. Now type G, just so you know, is not just used in the UK. They're actually all over the place and pretty much anywhere the UK has had some major influence. So for example, they're used in Ireland, the United Arab Emirates, Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, Indonesia, parts of India, and even several other countries. So those are very different from the type A and type B that we use here in North America. The type A is the two prong here, and the type B is the three prong, which includes the ground pin. And these guys don't have any way to service anything in here. All of this is completely sealed off, it's completely solid, and there's no way to do anything to fix this if this starts to become broken or frayed. 
Your options are to toss it, which is what most people do, and get a new one, or you can cut it off and use a replacement plug. I've got a video showing how to do that, but it's nice that with the Type G plugs here, it's just a built-in feature to be able to fix these or adjust these if need be. All of the names you see on the screen here are the people who have most recently joined our channel membership and are supporting the channel. So thank you each and every one. You most likely noticed the fuse inside the plug itself here. We see this from time to time in North American plugs, but is definitely not a standard. Having a fuse in every plug is actually essential to the system they use, which is called a ring circuit. A ring circuit has the ground, neutral, and live wires going out from the source location and then feeding every single socket and then looping all the way back to the source. This is different than the radial circuits that we use here in North America. We start at the circuit breaker panel and then a line goes out called a home run, connects to as many outlets as we need or receptacles, and then it ends at a light fixture or an outlet. In the UK, the ring circuit actually acts like two separate radial circuits going at the same time, one in each direction. As a result, having a fuse on every appliance means that if there's a short or an overload in an appliance, the fuse in the plug can blow rather than tripping the whole circuit and everything else on it. These fuses are typically pretty easy to replace and they cost next to nothing as well. For a plug like this, you do have to take it apart to access that plug, but it's usually just one screw like we saw. But a lot of plugs actually come with a little access panel that you can get without removing any screws to make it even easier. Number four on our list is the robustness of these pins, which are so good at carrying a large load. Now these pins are pretty massive. You may have noticed that. They're actually all four millimeters thick on these Type Gs. This is eight millimeters thick, and then these neutral and lives are about 6.35 millimeters. When I hold this side by side next to our Type B, you can see the difference. The result of this is that the Type G has at least 50% more metal than a Type B, and it actually has three and a half times more metal than the Type A that doesn't have the ground. Feature number three is the fact that every Type G plug has a ground or an earth pin. This is really important for a handful of reasons. As far as safety is concerned, always having a ground means that you're not going to experience the arcing, or at least you shouldn't in most circumstances experience any arcing. Arcing is bad news because that basically means that electricity has gone off the rails and it's gonna find the path of least resistance and a lot of times that's through you. That could shock you or with enough voltage that could stop your heart and kill you. So very dangerous if you don't have that ground in place at all times. You will notice on some plugs in the UK, for example, that these are just plastic. Typically, if you see a plastic pin on here, that means the appliance is double grounded. You can tell by a marking or an icon on the appliance that is a square within a square. It also serves the purpose of not only opening the shutters, but also always keeps things aligned. You cannot mix up the live and the neutral if your ground is always at that top place. Number two is the fact that every outlet or receptacle has its own switch. So check this out. I've got this little switch right here that I can use to control this lamp. Of course, you can control the lamp on the device itself, but this comes in handy for multiple purposes. Number one, it gives you an extra place to turn something on or off, and along with that, it cuts the power completely to the device. There's a lot of devices and appliances out there that are using a trickle amount of energy at all times, even when it's powered off. So by switching it off at the receptacle here, you're taking care of that issue. Number one on our list, and honestly, these were pretty tricky to put in any particular order, so take that for what it's worth, but is the fact that all of these outlets and plugs run off of 230 volts. Here in the US, we use a 110 or 120 volt system. There's different names for it, but it's the same idea. And in the UK, for example, and in most of the world actually, it's a 230, which is anywhere from 220 to 240 volts typically. Running on 230 volts has a lot of impact on how you can use the outlets and receptacles around your house. So for example, if you wanna plug a lamp into this, no problem obviously, but you can even plug a much larger appliance over here. Let's say a washing machine, for example, something a little more power hungry. Space heaters have been a big issue for tripping circuit breakers here in the US. On 230 volt, they can handle that a lot better. You can even plug in things like a hair dryer and an iron at the same time in many cases, especially if the gauging of the wire in the walls is appropriate for that kind of use. You can see with these 10 features how impressive this setup is, but that is not to say that it doesn't have its flaws. For starters, look at the size of these things. I mean, this is a standard Type A. This is what we use for most things in the United States and in North America. I'd seriously say this is probably at least five times as big. You can see it from the front, you can see it from the side, 
it's just massive. Another consideration with this is that the ring circuits that are used in the UK and elsewhere have a problem with what's called load balancing. Now, many times it's not really a big issue, but what it means is that you don't want to have a lot of your power being consumed on one portion of the ring. You want to distribute that throughout the ring as much as possible because if you don't, you're actually forcing a lot of electricity, a lot of load to happen in a short distance of these wires. And these wires typically tend to be a thinner gauge, which is part of the beauty of the system. It takes up less copper, but the load balancing can be an issue in many cases. On that note, installing or maintaining or even testing a ring circuit is a lot more difficult than a radial circuit. So that's something to be considered with the overall system in general. The switches that we showed earlier on the socket here are a good thing in some cases, but they're a bad thing in other cases. So for example, let's say this light is not turning on. You flip the switch. So let's turn this off, you know, on the socket here. We flip the switch, everything seems to be dead. You're not sure what's going on. And at that point, you're not sure if you need to start troubleshooting the lamp itself, or if it's the light bulb, or if it's the socket. Lastly, due to the design of the plug, if you were to just let this thing fall somewhere or unplug it, guess how it's gonna land every single time. Now, if you thought waking up in the middle of the night, walking through the house and stepping on a Lego was painful, 